Hello everybody and welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. If you are new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. There is no cost to do so. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Of course, you can save any of the videos you'd like to come back and watch again. Um, but I wanted to show you today, uh, I think I mentioned that one of the videos I was going to make, I may have re refer referenced this in one of my last videos on this machine, is talking about cleaning. Uh, the machine. Now this is something I've done before, but this particular machine uh, is a good example to to show you uh, some of the things you can do when you're looking at cleaning your, your vintage sewing machine. Now often, many of you will have machines that are in dark colors. Black was obviously a very, very popular, uh, um, prominent color in sewing machines for a huge part of the history of uh, uh, of the sewing machine. But in this case, I have the Neki Supernova, which is done in this sort of sage green, and it looks a little olive in places because it is stained. And then the other color was um, <clears throat> uh, a sort of ivory, sort of a cream color. It was never a pure white, I don't think. If it was, it was kind of a warm white, a little cream going on here. And for the first time in a number of days, I have some sunlight and it's, it's bouncing off the snow. So I've gotten really nice lighting in here. This is one of those things that's not easy to, to show on a camera under electric light, uh, even though you might be able to see the soiling on your machine. So let's talk for a minute about, well, we'll just use this machine as a great example. Uh, your machine may have similar issues, uh, but regardless, we'll take a look and see see if I can move this just a bit. There we go. Now, you guys may remember one of the earlier videos I mentioned to you that I, in fact, I think it was the last video, I took a piece of masking tape off. People, uh, it's not unusual if you get a machine that it has, people had put tape on the bed of the machine because they were trying to, to establish where their seam allowances would be when they were sewing. And uh, at some point, machines would put little markings so you could look at those for your seams. This machine didn't have them. And so uh, the person who was using it, remember sewing machines were, when they were new, they were tools. They were bought uh, like appliances. They had a very specific purpose. They weren't just bought because they were beautiful, although many of them were, at least according to my eye and many of yours, many of you folks uh, talk about certain machines that you love. In any case, uh, I think I mentioned to you guys that one of the things that I did was instead of trying to scrape the, the tape off, the glue, and this was masking tape that had been used, one of the things I did was I took a uh, sewing machine oil and I let it sit there for, for quite a long time, in fact longer than I had planned on it. It didn't hurt anything, but uh, I had done this because I had put the machine away and I wanted it to sit. But normally you let it sit for, I don't know, days on end. Uh, and uh, by the way, I found a, a tool recently that you may find useful. There are different things you can use when you're trying to remove something off a painted surface and you don't want to harm it. Now, some of the older machines with the black that have the shellac clear coating on them, you want to be extra careful because you may think that you're scraping off soiling, but you're actually scraping off the old yellowed remnants of the shellac coating. So make sure you, you kind of have an idea of what it is you're scraping. In this case, this yellow right here, I don't even know if it'll pick up on the camera, but maybe it's a little bit in the light. This is the remnants of the masking tape. Now, uh, this is a guitar pick, and it's really interesting because it's nice and f it's flat. It has an edge to it, but it's somewhat rounded, right? It's not, uh, and yet you still have to be careful with anything even like this. You can end up scratching your machine. Because remember, a lot of these paint finishes are very old. So don't assume that anything that you use is, you know, uh, totally void of, of causing harm. And of course, this pick has a texture on it. You can hear me uh, scraping it with my fingernail. And that's to help people when they're playing guitars uh, hold on to it so it doesn't slip out of their hands. So you don't want this this, you can maybe see the texture. You don't want this scraping on your paint, right? You want this edge. So, uh, and if you don't have a guitar pick, you don't have to go out and get one. You might want to use, there are different things you could use, maybe a piece of wood, um, uh, maybe uh, something that has a plastic edge that is smooth, not sharp, right? And so I'm just coming here to see, you know, and some people just use their fingernail or their thumbnail. In fact, in this case, it's actually working pretty well. Um, 
So I'm gonna, yeah, actually is, and you'll know your finger, your fingernail will have that that sensation in it. Now here you can see I'm using the the pick to actually get up some of this. Uh, you can see some of the tape that's still there, that's curling up here. Just a, some layer of it. I guess masking tape must come off in layers sometimes. Anyway, this is something that uh, if you ever get tape on a machine, again, it's you know don't freak out because it's pretty common. Um, I'd say at least maybe I don't know one in every four machines I've ever gotten had tape on it, and you know I had to, to pull that off and deal with it. But if you're careful, you don't have to hurt your machine, and you can get it off. You just need patience. If you're in a hurry, well, just just don't get in a hurry, or, or you can get into a lot of problems with sewing vintage sewing machines if you're in a hurry. Anyway, while this is still soaking a little bit here, and I'll make sure the oil is going around this edge where they have the tape, I want to talk to you guys about the cleaners. And people have asked me different questions like, well, what do I use to clean this? There are different things people can use. Um, I've shown you guys in the past things like hand cleaner, which is goes under the names. Uh, there are different names for this. Gojo is one brand. There are many brands. Uh, Permatex. But these things were used to help people clean grease and, and greasy soils off of their hands. You can use those. Um, in fact, I'll get some and we'll try it along with some of the other things I'm going to kind of demonstrate for you guys. Okay, so I'm going to grab the, the, the hand cleaner. I've got some other things we're going to try today, but I wanted to remind you guys that this does work. And I will repeat something that is very important. Never buy, never use any of these hand cleaners if they have pumice. They come both with and without pumice. Pumice is useful if you're trying to scrape you know, greasy stains off your hands. Um, it's also good for getting paint and stuff like that off your off your fingers. It's really good, but the pumice is like sandpaper and you will destroy your painted finish. Do not use one. Make sure it says no pumice. This one, what does it say? It contains aloe and lanolin. And unfortunately, the, this doesn't actually, usually it will say with pumice, but to be extra, extra sure, just read the whole label. I know that's awfully exciting, isn't it? There's an ingredients label and there's no pumice listed here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some samples of different cleaners on here and we'll see um, if they work. We've already got uh, sewing machine oil, so let's let's put a little bit more oil here. In fact, what I'll do, see if this will work. I'm going to the, the cream areas of the machine really show the soiling, okay? This is a combination of dirt. It could be old sewing machine oil because people often put oil in places it shouldn't go because they don't know any better. Oh, this squirts, I'm over here and over here. And in, in any case, uh, it, sometimes you're simply looking at old yellowed sewing oil. You could be looking at nicotine because people, uh, a lot more people smoked back in the day. and. Sometimes you'll get a smell. I don't have any smell with this machine. And the reason being, um, the, the, anytime you have an odor in a machine, the, the odor is absorbed by something other than the metal. Metal doesn't really absorb odors. Things like old dust, old lint, uh, grease, and oil, those things absorb uh, odors and can make a machine really stink. But it's not the, it's, thankfully, it's not the steel itself. So once you clean the machine, you should be able to get rid of most, if not all, of your odors. But I don't have any in this case. So I'm going to take the, uh, the, the hand cleaner here, and I'm just going to put, let's go right here. I'll just put like a little dab here, right? And there's, there's, some, uh, there's some light solvents in here. There's a whole list of ingredients for this stuff. And we'll take a look. And then I think I've got paper towels. They have a little more texture than, say, a Kleenex, which I was showing in the last video. And I may even use um, uh, cotton swabs, which is you know they're white and they'll show they'll show uh, any soiling that we pick up here. Now, what else can we use? We'll go ahead and do some sewing machine oil, and I'll just just kind of rub it in here. I don't want to I don't want to um, have it dripping and pouring down the side of the machine. And somebody asked me about WD-40. Now, WD-40, oh boy, uh, it's kind of funny that so many things have been said and written about this product. Uh, and one of the reasons that it gets a bad rap is that it is often misused. P 
people have used WD-40 for many purposes, uh, one of which it was designed for was to help loosen stuck parts, things that had corroded. You know, if you had a, a lock that was jammed, you could put WD-40 in it. Um, and it's, uh, I think WD stands for water displacement. The point here is it is not a lubricant. If you put WD-40 in your sewing machine, it could help unlock it. But if you don't uh, replace that with sewing machine oil, you will not like the result. And so I, I really don't blame the product. I blame the mis, misintended use of it. Now, someone asked me and or suggested to me that it could be used to clean old grease and oil uh, for, you know, for the for the aesthetic purposes of uh, cleaning a sewing machine. So we'll go ahead. I'm not worried. It's not it should not hurt the paint finish that I've got here. So I'm not really concerned about that if it but I am using it on a, you know, on a small section here. So let's see, we've got cleaner. We've got sewing machine oil right here. We'll just put a little. There we go, just enough right here. I'm, again, I'm not trying to cover the whole machine with it. We'll do a little sampling. So far, it just like, looks like a dirty machine with a bunch of uh, shiny liquids laying on it. Now, I've got one other thing here. This is an old bottle. The, the stuff I'm using is not, I think it was some sort of branded cleaner, but that's not what I'm using. I came up with a formula of uh, cleaner that I use around the house and it has uh, a number of ingredients in it. And I'm gonna try this. It has a small amount of alcohol. Now, big warning here, do not take rubbing alcohol and use it to clean your machine. It can be a very effective cleaner. It can also really harm your paint finish. That alcohol is a solvent and solvents soften and can literally strip paint they can dull the, the, the shiny finish that the paint has. Because, because remember, paint, paint has resins that make it uh, resist things like water, but it's not impervious. It's not uh, totally non-porous. And it surprises people. You know, if you've ever uh, had a drop of water uh, left on something that had paint, you might come back and think, hey, there's a little spot here, you know, a little moisture spot. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and because this is in a sprayer, I don't want to spray it all over the machine, I'm going to sort of douse this little, uh, this end of my paper towel here, and I'm going to put it right here. And just kind of rub it in there. So given the, uh, the sort of the, the size of these little samples that I put, I think what I'm going to do is instead of trying the cotton swab, I'll use these paper towels. Again, they have a little bit of texture, but they shouldn't be too harmful in terms of causing a scratch. If you have dirt and, and grit, I mean, it's amazing the stuff that you sometimes see on sewing machines. They're just pulled out of God knows where. Make sure that anything dry and loose has been removed. Okay, you want to brush it off or actually vacuuming it off with a soft brush is good because if not, and you start just, if you just start squirting it down with some kind of cleaner, you're going to end up using that dirt and even dust can act as an abrasive. You can actually harm the finish of your, your machine trying to clean it. So I know it sounds like, gosh, this is awfully involved for just cleaning a machine, but it took years very often for uh, the sewing machine to get dirty. Uh, be patient. You know, if you're patient, you're going to come out with a much better job and a lot less likelihood of harming your finish. Um, you can see here I'm taking my, I'm just using my thumbnail here. And I have this, uh, again, this is where the, uh, and if you need to, put a little bit more sewing machine oil on the surface because it acts like sort of a lubricant while you're, you're using your, in this case, my thumbnail. Uh, and it's not a bad idea because it will help your nail slide across the finish and help to prevent any scuffing or scratching. Um, but again, you know, notice the angle. I'm not doing it, you know, you're going to have to kind of test this out yourself with your own nail just to see. And maybe you're more comfortable using, oh, I don't know, a toothpick, some sort of something soft like uh, you could even use a wooden spoon, uh, as, as odd as that sounds, like a wooden tongue to suppressor or something like that. The point is you want something that's not metal and uh, not very sharp, okay? It can have a, 
a close edge like this, uh, I don't know, the, I've never tried the uh, guitar pick before, but it seemed to help at least getting up some of the, the heavier parts of the uh, uh, tape. But in terms of this glue residue, honestly, your best bet is just to put the sewing machine oil on it and, and then do some scraping with your nail or whatever this soft scraper that you've come up with. Now, if you don't get it all, it may take stages. I mean, I just realized that I've gotten a lot of this up, but it may take because every time you remove some, you now make more, um, you enhance the ability of more sewing machine oil to go in and penetrate. Um, uh, this and I'm sure this this uh, topic is good for uh, insomnia. Good God, talking about removing tape adhesive off a machine, boy, what a snooze fest. Anyway, let's go and take a look and see. Now I haven't let these these cleaners up here on the top of the machine. I haven't really let them sit very long. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to try this and see, and they make they may work at different speeds. Okay. And you think, well, gosh, I can't always tell if I'm getting anything here. It doesn't look super, super clean and shiny. All right, let's, first thing I'm going to do is uh, we'll zoom in here a bit so you can get a little bit better picture of what I'm doing here. And where's, looking for where I was rubbing with this. Uh, This, uh, this hand cleaner. So I don't know if it'll pick up on camera. I'm getting a little bit of soiling, not a lot, you know. Uh, and again, it's a trade-off. If you want to use something that works faster, you can try that. But of course, you risk more, uh, you have a higher chance of damaging it. Now, what was my next thing here? I did hand cleaner. I did, I think I did sewing machine oil. Let's see. Not really seeing much of anything come off here on the paper towel, but that doesn't mean it's not working. Sewing machine oil is probably the slowest of everything you might try, but it's also the the least you know uh, aggressive in terms of trying something out. Now, I'm really curious to see how my let's see what was the next thing. This is where I put my, uh, okay, I got some stuff off there. That's the WD-40, I think that's what that is, yeah. And it's a little yellow, okay, but all right, well, what does that mean? You know, it's, it's not clean. We haven't cleaned the machine, but remember, guys, it took decades for this soiling to build up. Uh, people are often in such a hurry with so many things in life. I'm going to try doing it this way. I'm going to try putting some of this WD-40 right on the paper towel. And then let's go back here and see. Uh, and I'm just rubbing back and forth, you know, no, there's nothing super scientific about this. Uh, hmm. Yeah, well, a little bit. It's doing okay. I'm not, I'm not dramatically impressed, are you? <laughs> I'm not. Okay, uh, I'm going to try something. I'm gonna come over here. And again, because this cleaner stuff that I put together, this little brew that I put together, it um, it it has some, some alcohol in it. Okay, not a lot. And let's go over here and see what it does. And it also has, let's see. But because alcohol evaporates, I wanted to try it while it was wet. Let's see here. Hmm, not too shabby, but you want to be real careful to notice and make sure that you haven't lost, you know, if you start using anything with lots of alcohol in it, guys, you are going to risk taking the shine off of your paint, which I suppose you could then go back and wax to restore. But again, you want to be cautious because you know, I, I am not interested in stripping and repainting a, uh, any of my machines. You guys know that. I believe in, uh, I'm a pretty strong believer in 
conserving what is here. Now, I'm, I'm not knocking people who say, oh, you know, I, I want to, um, uh, you know, I want to strip my machine, I want to repaint it, I want to change the color. That's all well and great, but it is a huge commitment in time uh, or expense. And if you ever go, and there are people, there are people who particularly love to repaint sewing machines, uh, featherweights in particular. And if you ever go and get an estimate on what that will cost, you will see what I mean. It's it, to be done right. Okay, anyone can can get a can of spray paint and go to it. I really strongly suggest you don't do that. Um, you you may be disappointed, not because you don't know how to paint, but do you know how to paint something like a sewing machine? Uh, I have not done it, and uh, I am again. Uh, I love preserving things as as close to uh, as what they were. So I am looking at this, guys, and I know that you're looking at it. I'm going to show this to you. It's not easy to pick up, even with the natural light I've got here. Let's see if I can raise the camera just a bit. Bear with me here. I'm going to move move this and see. Um, it may not actually show up all that well. Uh, this is a very subtle soiling. Okay, it's it was a cream color to begin with, and now it's sort of yellowed here. What I have noticed is this cleaner seems to have done a little bit better job. But again, I want to be sure that I have not harmed the finish in any way. So far, so good. Um, so, let's try. You know, when you have a darker colored machine, it's not as difficult because the soiling, you can clean it and oil, you know, put some sewing machine oil or wax on it and buff it. And it may not be a problem at all because uh, it's dark and it doesn't really show. But this machine, now I'm going back over these other areas where I was testing things and I'm using this, this little homemade brew cleaner that I have. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting some of this stuff off of here. It seems to be working okay. And I may want to go back when I'm done and wax it to seal the paint, right? So far it's not stripping the paint. That that would be a disaster. That's the last thing we want. So when I you know sometimes I I may go a little overboard trying to caution people about be very careful. I'm doing this because you don't want to necessarily, uh, you know, strip away the thing you're trying to preserve, right? You can really see, let's, let's turn this and see, let's see if I can zoom in here, maybe zooming in even further would help. Here we go. You guys can see, and you can see right on the edge here, there's some yellowing. So, and I'm really starting to get some uh, yellow on my paper towel, so that's a good thing. So, um, And again, if it doesn't just, you know, it's if it doesn't come off magically instantly, don't assume that it's not going to work. Remember, uh, we're using a chemical action and and the friction of wiping with the paper towel to remove something that's taken decades to form. So it can come off, right? And we can even think that they make uh, in, in automotive circles, they make cleaner waxes. Well, actually, a lot of polishes have uh, what what you might call cleaners in them. They they're basically solvents in the in the polish. Uh, that's how a lot of your metal polishes work. But that doesn't mean they work on painted finishes. Uh, can we try it? I suppose we could. Let's see. So this pro this little mixture I have worked. But it's not perfect. Everything is not purely cream as it was in 1957 when someone put down serious money and took this took this wonderful machine home. Uh, let's try one more one more idea I have. Okay, guys, I was looking for my that German Wienall metal polish I have, 
and I think I have it stored away uh, for the summer because I use it for my car and I for whatever reason oh wait I do have it uh, just realized I do so take a look at this now these are products that I use uh, I'm really into detailing my car in the summertime this is a uh, there are lots of these products out there I I don't endorse them it works great for the car I've never used it on a sewing machine so there's one that's called a compound and a wax so I'm gonna set the wax aside for a moment because the wax is not <clears throat> I predict it's not gonna give me much in terms of cleaning action so let's try we'll try the compound and we'll try the uh, the that German polish I mentioned okay uh, I went to get a couple more paper towels now the reason I'm holding off on this metal polish while for metal it is certainly one of the finest least abrasive polishes I've come across that doesn't mean it would be perfect for paint now I could use it here I even have an aluminum polish I can use on this beautiful beautiful aluminum hand wheel that <laughs> Necky used to, to to create once upon a time but the goal here is to get the paint clean with the least aggressive uh, abrasive product that you can because paint is um, it's a lot softer than metal and it does not does not appreciate being being uh, uh, rubbed with aggressive products uh, this is why you'll notice I'm not using a microfiber towel there are people who do there are people who say oh it's not a problem don't worry about it I'm not willing to I have I tried using a one of those magic eraser things once and I really damaged uh, the finish of one of my machines and I had to go back and um, redo it uh, had to polish it and and uh, clean things up okay so here we go I've just got a little bit of this this is the compound uh, hmm let's see I'm gonna come over here I'm just rubbing the compound into the the finish now these products have and it they have um, you know waxes and and other ingredients to help things shine but the compounds purpose you can see this coming off and I'm assuming this is soiling is to to remove in a very gentle way uh, things like you know uh, grit and grime that have gotten on a car finish or paint finish it's what they were designed for but again I'm having to go really careful here because what if it's too aggressive what if it's too abrasive then I'm going to be wearing some of my paint off you know anytime you want to clean anything and you don't want to actually damage it that's always a challenge that's a challenge when you're you know you get a stain in your clothes or you know you're you need to use something to get the stain out without harming the the thing you're trying to to fix um, so it's this is not an unusual problem whether you're dealing with a sewing machine or you know something you know tree sap on your car or um, yeah because I'm using this and it's cleaning parts of this finish but I'm still getting this little yellowing here that's not gone away um, I'm going to and by the way this this black that you see is that's what's coming that's the tarnish off the aluminum because I'm I'm uh, rubbing up right up against the, where those two uh, two things meet hmm well let's see it's cleaner than it was but it's not perfect and then you will need to decide when you're cleaning your own machine hmm now <coughs> This is probably the high wire act here. This is, of course, the metal polish. Now, it, it works great on the metal, but I'm going to be very cautious about how I apply this polish to a paint. I really, really am going to come over here on the other side and lean the, the machine towards you guys. Let's come over here and just kind of do gentle rubbing. Notice I'm not going crazy with this because the more abrasive the product, the less pressure you want to use. Okay, these original paint finishes were gorgeous, and we don't want to damage them 
in the attempt to get them clean. Hmm. Now, you could always, and I've literally just put this on here, you know, one way you can do this is to let the product sit for a bit. So what I'm noticing is that I'm getting a lot of the staining off of here, off of the paint. But what's happening is I'm not getting all of it. I'm basically cleaning the paint. I can tell the paint is a lot cleaner than it was before, but it's not, you know, it's not all uh, uh, even, right? Because the stain, it was not even. The staining was not even. So it's an improvement, but I'm not done. Um, again, if you guys have had in your own experience, um, if you've, you can see this little bit of, you know, yellowing here. It could be old oil. That's what I suspect it is. If you've had experiences with a product that worked well without damaging your machine, share it with us. Uh, please uh, put it there in the comments on the channel and uh, other people can see it as well. But again, uh, it, you know, some people don't care if they say, I'm going to get this clean no matter what. And you can if that's, you know, your goal. But again, you can end up harming things. Be extra careful, by the way, down here where you might have uh, either decals or something that was silk screened onto there. I'm using right here. I'm using some of this uh, some of this you know cleaning solution I put together in the bottle. But honestly, it does it is working. But I'm kind of wondering if maybe the the compound and polish is a better idea because. My concern with the with the solution that I have is that I might uh, it might be just too much alcohol, which can again dull the paint finish, which is you know kind of a bummer. I'm going to go back on that green area you guys just saw me touch. See if I can do it. I'm going to take this is the compound. I'm going back with the compound, and of course, if we let the compound sit then the chemicals in the compound would would have more time to kind of do their magic right so i'm kind of for the purposes of the video you know i'm kind of doing it here i haven't li literally have not uh, allowed it to just sit um, and you want to do this evenly because if you don't you're going to end up with a sort of a splotchy appearance uh, and we will see okay I don't know if this shows here. This is clean. This is, and this is where I might take my cotton swabs and come in and around here, right? Because I, I don't want to, uh, you know, you want to be consistent and, and go everywhere. It's clearly getting clean, but again, trying these different products so far, this uh, car rubbing compound, and uh, I think that's my favorite so far. I, I want to try that before I do any more with the, the Wien All Polish. Can I tell that anything's been damaged? Not really, but I know it's going to be more aggressive than the compound is, or at least I think it is. I say that. That's that's my gut feeling on it, but again, I have, I have not been able to measure it and prove it. But there you go, guys. Uh, it was kind of funny. One of my viewers said, hey, I have a supernova. How do I clean it? And I was like, oh, that's great because I was planning on doing this video. So that's, that's good timing. Uh, next video, um, I am going to try to remember to show you guys how to thread this. Always use your manual for reference, but sometimes it's nice to see in a video uh, how these things are threaded. Uh, because if you don't thread your machine properly, it doesn't matter what how good a condition it's in, it's probably not going to work for you and you will be very unhappy. And you may even think it's broken, but it can literally be as simple as threading it properly. Thanks for watching everyone. This is 34 minutes and counting, one of the longer videos, but I wanted to show you guys the different things I tried. Always be conservative and be careful when you first start experimenting. Maybe experiment on the back of the machine, somewhere where, you know, it's not going to show as much. But I will uh, continue the continue the mission of cleaning this old this old supernova up and giving it uh, you know giving it a good cleaning so it can uh, you know look proper as a showing machine once again it'll have some nicks sure and we'll talk about paint um, eventually I've gotten some new paints in and I'll be 
looking to experiment with some of those maybe on this machine I haven't decided yet but anyway uh, share your thoughts down in the comment section below and I appreciate you all watching take care